Uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is the um, School Building Committee for Thursday, January 25, 2024. Call the meeting to order. Uh, the first item on our agenda is the approval of the minutes from January 11. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Um, Randy, there's a... Um, okay. I, I wasn't at the, the January 11th meeting. Okay, so your name should be off as member president. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Will we approve them? Okay, thank you. I'll second. Second from Steve. Uh, if all in favor of approving the minutes, please indicate. Any opposed or abstentions? Okay, thank you. Um, then that brings us to opportunity for public comment. Okay, seeing none, we'll move on. Um, Contractor Architect OPM update. Scott, I guess I'll turn it over to you to start the updates. Okay, thank you, Randy. Good evening, everyone. Scott Pellman, Collier's Project Leaders. Um, start in the uh, stone cap work. Um, there was some work that began uh, last Monday. Uh, it's been a little bit weather dependent. Uh, contractor actually expects to be back on site uh, this weekend. Uh, they're just looking for about six days to get that work completed, but that work is underway. Uh, the lightning protection system, uh, we finally got that PO issued. I've started coordinating with that vendor, uh, and they're anticipating being out sometime middle to end of next month. Uh, that was the lightning protection system for the pump house equipment and all uh, due to the issue we had last year. Uh, so that is moving forward. The wood uh, floor in the gym, uh, that replacement is complete. We had identified an area of striping, it was painted the wrong color that has been corrected and resealed. Uh, we're still coordinating uh, a specification and obtaining a new threshold uh, to completely cover the uh, exposed wood end grain for that. Uh, and, and Joe from our office is coordinating with Jeff at TSKP uh, to get something specified so we can get that ordered. Uh, Joe also took a look at the door sweeps. Um, again, there's still openings at the bottom of those door sweeps. He took some photos, uh, which is a you know uh, an area of concern still. Um, just waiting to get those distributed. He is coordinating with Newfield on that. Uh, there was a follow-up commissioning meeting um, on January 18th. Uh, those minutes have been distributed. Um, a number of the issues have been addressed. Uh, they continue to make progress. Uh, I do understand, uh, you know, recently, again, we had a, a uh, heating concern in Kate's office and, and the team's been out and is, is working on that. Uh, there was also the, um, the uh, representative from the lighting controls contractor was on site uh, back on January 16th, um, made the uh, required modifications to the lighting control system. Um, that was tested. I believe Bill witnessed those tests. Our understanding is now is all the lighting control sensors that operate and turn the lights on and off appropriately uh, are functioning as designed. Um, I'll stop there for a moment to see if there's any questions before continuing. Rich, go ahead. <clears throat> Sorry, took me a minute to find the unmute button. Um, we noticed today with all the uh, the freezing and the thawing that there are there's large deep puddles on the playscape. I thought that when we did that, that we kind of banked it somehow so that the water would not pull. Can anyone speak to that? The the playscape um, should be slightly pitched. Uh, it is a porous surface, um, you know, and it, it should have adequate under drainage. Um, so I don't know, Rich, if you're addressing the um, lower grade or upper grade playground area and specifically are talking about the wood, if it's the upper grade, is it the area where the wood chips are or is it the area where the poured in place play surface is? Um, actually, uh, I wasn't the one that noticed it. It was somebody who noticed it and told me so, but it was definitely where the first graders have recess. So I, I don't know the specifics of that, though. Could, could it be that uh, this would be a question for Jeff, maybe that the ground is frozen a little deeper and that um, the surface water and surface snow has melted and it can't can't uh, percolate? 
It could be, but I agree with Scott. I think there should be um, should be relatively level and pitched slightly away. I wonder if that has, is that the little kids playground right off the kindergarten area? No, it would be the the upper grade one, K, uh, the first grade. Two, okay, because there grade you know there's there's the asphalt area there, and then there's the uh, rubber surface, and then there's the mulch. So one of those three, I mean, the mulch wouldn't be an issue, but it's one of the other two. Then that would, it'd be nice to get a photo and see. But it, I, you know, I'm hoping it's not the rubber because that would be you know remember the ADA issues where there was pockets and slopes and issues like that up there. I'm just wondering if. Uh, I can ask someone to head out and take some pictures. Yeah, that'd be good. I mean, Chris, Chris might have a point there, but I like to see the pictures and 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 uh, actually, I'll send it to Gary over there at Richter Segan and see what he's thinking is on that. But that doesn't kind of feel right. Okay, so we will follow up with that. Thank you, Rich. Um, Thank you. So, if there's no further questions on that, um, uh, we have. Um, and I believe I reattached it, but the uh, acoustical wall covering, um, you know, uh, we looking to have just a, a final discussion on that. Um, Peter Dart and Kate um, have made a decision that they um, prefer the simple, I'll call it the felt option, which is installed in I think two of the, of the classrooms um, on the upper floor right now, um, that they're um, interested in pursuing that, not the thicker conwed panel um, option. Um, so really, um, you know, as, as part of tonight's deliberations, what we really need, we don't need any formal necessarily vote, but just direction from the committee. Um, you know, if they want to make it a formal vote, you certainly can. Um, just on what way you'd like us to proceed with, um, you know, working with Bill Allen, working with Peter and Kate uh, to get that facilitated. We have been coordinating with um, purchasing I believe there is a, an option that will allow us um, to go ahead and, and purchase the required materials uh, directly off of the website. Um, you know, we are just having to coordinate that because it, it most likely will exceed the ten thousand dollar threshold. Okay. Tony, Peter, do um, you know? oh, go ahead, Tony. I have a question. I'm just looking <laughs> at the descriptions of these three, uh, the three options, um, the Conwed panels say notice uh say best sound improvement the felt one says noticeable sound improvement what happens if we get them up and it's not enough sound improvement what do you do then well i think um it's based on the the amount that are currently installed in the classrooms and i think um the teachers have had quite a bit of time and maybe it's more appropriate to let kate respond to this but i believe the consensus is that um, the number of panels, the amount of panels um, installed in the test classrooms have adequately um, improved the situation and they're looking to replicate that for the other classrooms. But I'll, I'll let Kate opine on that further. Yeah. Kate here and Pedro's here as well. Uh, hey, go ahead, Kate. Okay, sure. So yes, it is that we can apply more of them. They're easily applied. They can be applied in a variety of places in the classroom. And in the classrooms where we've had them, it is noticeable um, to the effect that we need in a classroom. The needs of the classroom are always slightly different than the needs of those larger spaces. And so this is working and the staff have been receptive that have had them in their classrooms. Enough? Or yes. it, okay. Because it just seems to me that noticeable once they all get up might not be enough for the teachers. And then what do we do? So well, we 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 have discussed it. And so it, it is more than noticeable enough. It, it's significant in our book in terms of what you can see if you walk into the two classrooms. And I'm, you know, I welcome anybody who would like to come and look because there's two classrooms across from each other. One has them up and one doesn't. Thank you. I, I think the other um, consideration is uh, if we went with the other panels, the larger ones that to have more, um, you know, potential sound absorption uh, would require uh, a significant disruption in potentially removing uh, panels and replacing them. We also have not had a chance to really uh, explore if they would have a difference uh, in sound quality. Where the felt panels, we were able to immediately purchase, put them on. 
Uh, and they're uh, easy enough where we can continue to add. Um, they're, uh, we're, Alan's on the, the call too. I think they're two by two uh, in size and uh, various colors. So they're fun, they're engaging, um, but they're also small enough and easy enough that we can continue to add should we need to increase the treatment. Um, because that's a known quantity and something that we've seen and it's fairly easy, uh, I'm, I'm for that versus the potential disruptive nature of getting something larger, having to disrupt uh, some classroom spaces over the summer and not necessarily knowing if we're gonna hear any difference uh, in sound quality. Thank you. Chris, go ahead, you've had your hand up for a while. Thanks. Um, I'm just wondering, what brand is it? What What are we getting? What are those felt panels called? And Peter, I didn't have that information. I was trying to find it before the meeting. Chris had inquired. I don't know if you know offhand. Uh, I don't know offhand. You, uh, Alan, uh, I see that you're on the call. Hopefully you can uh, look that up for us. Uh, not sure, but I can trace back the uh, email and, and vendor uh, once I'm at my desk, Chris, so I can get that. Um it, it's, last time we ordered them, it took us about two weeks to get them. But, Alan, do you uh, know the vendor? Um, I'm not quite sure the name of the vendor. Sorry. <laughs> or the name of the product? I will. I just give me a moment, and I'll pull it up for you. Thank you, Kate. Yep. Does this need to be an either or solution? Like, why? I don't know why we couldn't do the felt panels now and then move on to replacing the panels that we don't believe are working um, with in the future. I mean, why why wouldn't we want, I know it's belt and suspenders, but. I, I think um, Steve, the, the answer to that is, um, you know, to replace those panels, ordering them, taking them down, the potential damage to the wall surfaces, and then getting new panels cut and reinstalled Oh, right. um, would be significant. Now the panels have been sent out for testing. So, um, you know, we should be hearing back, hopefully from the lab. Um, I'm, I'm not sure of the exact time frame it's going to take to get that data back to us. Um, but we should hear from the lab, um, you know, what the um, potential impact of, of the painting was on those versus baseline, uh, you know, acoustics and the properties that they would have expected. So, um, you know, I think it's 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 probably even a little premature there, but I think if, um, you know, simply the acoustic effect can be um, achieved um, utilizing, you know, the, the felt method, which is which is a simple application and, and much more cost effective, um, I think the benefits of that probably outweigh trying to do all the demolition and replacement of what is there. I have dropped a link to the company that makes the panels into the chat for anyone who can right. see it. Um, right. And it was brought to us, uh, Peter, correct me if I'm wrong, um, by members of the teaching staff. This was something that they had learned about at a conference um, and it, it's used in other schools. Um, there's some positives. It's a pops of color. It can be applied in multiple locations and it has little to no disruption. Um, our staff were able to apply it overnight and it was up the next day in the classrooms. Right. Okay. Um, any other comments or questions on that? Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Chris. One last one. I'm sorry. Are these going to be the um, panels that we put up in the cafeteria area as well, or just the classrooms? No, just the classrooms. I believe um, some of the, the Conwed, the thicker panels have been already placed in the cafeteria. Um, and again, my understanding there is, is there has been an improvement. Yeah. So um, go ahead, Chris. Are we done in the cafeteria or are we are we at a happy point for the moment? We're, we're at a happy point for the moment. We're exploring um, some usable wall space. Uh, there's an aesthetic piece that we want to make sure we get it perfectly right. Uh, and so there's some wall space right now that has a smart board, has some signage, uh, it's it's not going to look great if we try to cut and piecemeal around those things without more of an intentional kind of look at the space. So I know Alan and Bill have weighed in on this and uh, they're looking at it. We do have the extra product. We do want to install more of them. 
but we want to make sure that we have the, the appropriate <clears throat> time and input from Kate to uh, see which walls we can reclaim uh, and uh, and look at. And I know Jeff was there and spotted a couple key places that we might want to uh, pop some of those panels up on. Okay, and just for public record, the, the link in the chat is for feltright.com. Um, so are we comfortable then um, moving forward with the process of obtaining these felts? I see general agreement around here, so. Do you need a motion? I, we, we could, um, we, we are not, you're, you're not any money right amount, now. So I think it's really just direction from the committee that you would like us to yeah. proceed with administration on getting a quote to obtain the materials and we'll bring that to the next committee meeting. Okay. All right. Let's do that then. Okay. So we understand the direction. Um, included in the meeting packet um, outside of the invoice package, uh, there was one quote um, from John C. Diggert um, to replace the probe. This is the probe that um, uh, monitors the water level in the 25,000 gallon um, underground tank. Um, we did look at the manufacturer's warranty, uh, reviewed the warranty issues. It, it is not, unfortunately, um, uh, under warranty any longer. Uh, there was a, a service call that was facilitated by Bill uh, back on December 14th, um, and that generated the proposal to replace the probe. Uh, and so that at this point is a, is a proposal? It's a quote. Uh, it's a quote. It's a, uh, it's a quote to get that replaced. And, and, you know, we do need to get that done. And unfortunately, it is not uh, under warranty. Um, Alan or Bill, could you explain more about this? I tried to um, quote unquote research what this thing is. It sounds like it's like a magnetic bobber of some sort that sends out an indication of what the level is. What, what actually is it? So it's, it's a rod that literally uh, goes across the diameter of the tank and it has a float that goes up and down this rod um, and that determines the amount of water um, so that the display can um, tell us whether it's full of water, whether it needs water, all based on where this float is inside the tank, um, whether it needs to be added water. So it's it's quite critical to the system for the sprinkler system. So, but it does it tells you the column of water that's in the in the tank, whether it's full, half full. Do we do we understand why it failed? No. Are we getting the same brand? So we are. I I would assume we're getting the same brand, but we have taken uh, um, their concerns were to test the water and we had a, a person come out yesterday and take water samples from the wells and from the tank to see if there was anything in there that could have caused um, a failure of this rod. Okay, thank you. Okay, and then the last um, update I have we had spoken about this at the last meeting about um, getting some type of control um, on the kitchen heat trace for the sanitary line. And we uh, we had calculated or the engineer had calculated that that would be an approximately uh, two year payback on that investment. Um, after that meeting, I have been um, speaking with Craig from Kohler Ronan, the, your design engineer, as well as I spoke to a gentleman from ABS who is your, um, your controls contractor and operator. Um, they are exploring, um, you know, potentially some, a couple other more cost-effective options. We spoke this afternoon. I'm anticipating having a proposal for an option or options and uh, should be ready to make a recommendation to the committee by the next meeting. Again, we, we anticipate the cost being um, high end right now. Uh, the option that we know somewhere in the neighborhood between 55 and, and $6,000 and again, we anticipate the, uh, the long-term savings uh, to pay that off in approximately two years. So you'll should see that at the next at the next meeting. And that's all I have for my report this evening. Okay. Any other questions for Scott? 
Brian or Steve, do you have anything to that you want to add to uh, the update or Jeff? No, I have nothing. No, we're all set, Randy. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, okay. Then uh, we get to um, project invoices. I muted myself, but I turned off my video. Yeah, the uh, the invoice packet this evening had included four invoices, uh, an invoice from TSKP, uh, one uh, for $35.45 and 75 cents, uh, an invoice from the Hartford Current. Uh, this was for the uh, re-advertisement um, for the lightning protection. We had to go out again because we didn't receive any bidders in the first uh, time that we put it out on the street. Uh, the third from TAS PC, this is our half of the, the cost, um, the other half borne by Newfield of the uh, mediator. Uh, so that's uh, for 3,600. And then the last is from the UPS store that uh, Bill and Alan had coordinated shipping the acoustical panels out that they had removed. Uh, so those have been shipped back out to the manufacturer as we spoke about earlier. Um, and the shipping cost there was $819.90. Uh, so the total of those four invoices is $8,345 and 74 cents. Okay. Uh, is there someone would like to make a motion regarding the invoices? I'd like to make a motion to approve invoice packet dated January 25th, 2024, including invoices from TSKP, Hartford Current, TAS, PC, and the UPS store for a total approval of $8,345.74. Here we have a motion. Is there a second? Um, Chris McDevoe. Any final comments? Then all in favor of approving the motion, please indicate. Any opposed or abstentions? Okay, and then the, the probe. Yeah, we uh, I had included in the, the meeting packet um, the quote uh, from John C. Diggert uh, dated January 25th, 2024. And, you know, that is to uh, come out and replace the probe. And the cost of that is four thousand one hundred and ninety five dollars. OK, is there a motion on that? I would move to uh, approve that quote. Okay. Do you want me to read the whole? Yeah, thing? I probably should. Read it. <laughs> uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve John C. Diggert in quote to replace the mag probe, dated January twenty fifth, twenty twenty four, in the amount of four thousand dollars and one hundred ninety five dollars. Sorry, one four thousand one hundred ninety five dollars. Okay, thank you. Uh, second. Zero cents. Steve seconds. Uh, all in favor? Any opposed or abstentions? Okay, seeing none. Okay. Um, in that case, that brings us uh, with no other business on the agenda. Oh, that brings us to adjournment. I will be adjourned. Yes, Keeper, thank you. Second. Madison, second. Uh, then all in favor can indicate, and uh, we'll see you next time.